So we are here in the Divar factory in the Gold Coast in South East Queensland, Australia, where these world-renowned fins are made. Uh, we're filming live with Ray Power, and if you want to ask us any questions as we go, you're more than welcome. Hey Ray, how's it going? Yeah, good, thanks. Tell us a bit about yourself, Ray. How long have you been spearfishing for? How'd you get into it? Uh, ever since I was a baby, I was fortunate enough to have a mother and father that were very keen, avid divers in the early 60s. Um, started off in rock pools and the rest is history. Lovely, awesome. And you've dived all around the world, some amazing spots. Do you have any favourite spots, favourite fish to hunt, anywhere? Oh, difficult, you know, like my favourite place still to dive would be far south coast of New South Wales. Yeah, there's a lot of other interesting places in the world, but down there has a lot of diversity, a lot of different fish species and stuff. Yep. You can always get in the water somewhere too, that's the other good thing. And I know you've been over to just recently, was it Sea of Cortez? Yeah, there's some special places in the world like Mexico. Yeah. Sea of Cortez is one of those places. It's got so much life, it's still relatively untouched. Rare places to find. <laughs> uh, tell us a bit about how you came to found what is now the world renowned Dive Bar Fins. Um, started making fins about 16 years ago. I used to work a uh, lot as a commercial diver, and every season I'd go through four to six sets of fins and basically got jacked by new sets of fins every uh, few months, so I thought I could do better. Yeah, bit off a bit more than I could chew. Started off playing around in my uh, garage and spent way too much money. <laughs> but the end result um, was a, a lot of uh, R&D, but yeah, the product speaks for itself. I think, so. so it came from your experience as a commercial diver and needing to have something that was tough and would yeah. withstand all those yep. conditions. Yeah. What kind of commercial diving was it? Um, I did a lot of cray diving, a lot of vegetable mer diving, trogon shell, basically any type of sea harvesting work. Yeah, awesome. And how many countries do dive off in ship to? Ooh, they're on every continent in, in a lot of different countries. Probably uh, major ones would be USA, Europe naturally, Middle East, uh, as far away as Norway, Brazil, some obscure little places in the middle of nowhere have got dive off in. So they're slowly making their way around the world. It's, it's getting busier and busier with the uh, popularity of free diving. Yeah, it's definitely becoming a pretty um, world-renowned sport. And I, I mean, I found it pretty funny the other night when we were hanging out and got a call from was it Russia. Some yeah. guy just wanted to order a yeah. set of things. <laughs> yeah, twenty four seven. I'm open twenty four seven. If the phone rings, I usually answer it. Right? Yeah, and obviously with such a massive operation, shipping worldwide, and they're just growing in popularity. How many people uh, help you out and, and run Dive R? <laughs> <laughs> Dive R is um, me, myself and I. I make every single thing that comes out of this workshop. Um, I've got a couple of helpers that help me pack stuff and that sometimes and you know, come in and do a little bit of work for me. But yeah, every, every set goes through these hands. So yeah, sometimes they take a while, but you know, generally um, start to finish, a single set of pins would take on average a week from the time they're laid up, reduced, through the tempering process, cut out, printed, edged, packed. Yeah, wow, long process for a one-man band. That's a lot of work. Other than, um, other than your fins, do you design and sell any other products? Um, yeah, I design other products. The, um, always looking at different things. We've got uh, these high-visibility, large, floats. They're really good for um, high boat traffic areas. Uh, the other reason I produced them was for one fish for one float type scenario as we've got a giant tuna or a marlin. The, um, Have they landed a few big fish yeah, so far? Yeah, they've landed some really good fish with them. The other ones are these uh, high-end carbon spear gun barrels. Wow. The um, don't advertise the fact that much that I do do spear guns. It's more of a you know, on the side hobby business compared to the, the fins. And other than gear, does Diver, I think you, you run some trips and things like that? Yeah, Diver does uh, expeditions. 
We um, operate in New Zealand each year for four to six weeks. This next coming season, January, February, will be really busy for a few months. The Sea of Cortez in Mexico. The, um, I used to do a lot of coral sea expeditions, but yeah, the rest of the world's got a lot to offer at the moment. So mm -hmm. yeah, moving overseas, further afield, more mm -hmm. fun. And can you um, walk us through a little bit, just briefly, how, how do you make your fins? Uh, it depends on the material, but essentially the process is the same. We start off with a, a tooling surface, which is uh, treated with a release agent. We then stack the raw material on, on top of the mould surface. In, in this case, it's carbon fibre we're using. So the, um, each layer and subsequent layers, depending on the fibre orientation and how stiff you want the fin, where you want it to bend, depends on how it's put together. Um, then we form a, a vacuum sealed bag over the job and the process that I use is a resin infusion. Um, after the part is uh, infused, it needs to set overnight and then the following day usually they get run through the magic box or the big oven, this is where all good things happen. Runs through a, a tempering cycle where the fin is heated up over a period of hours. Mm -hmm. um, depending on resin systems, can be a day sometimes, can be a day and a half. Uh, and that's where you get all the mechanical properties in, in the fin. The flex, the spring, uh, the toughness if you will. So. It's a real science. Yeah. So that machine basically takes it from being this material Yep. Like a fabric. From a, from a raw fabric yep. impregnated with uh, resin, I use a hybrid epoxy system. Mm -hmm. uh, they're tempered. They come out into a, into a sheet. Like this. They then, then go to the, the CNC. And you see on here I've got a little program. It's a real science. <laughs> where each individual blade is cut out. Hmm. Then they go across the road actually to my printer. who puts a nice Diva gold logo. Then they come back and um, I'm here all day gluing edges on fins. <laughs> so, depending on what fin it is, they need a locking strip bonded to each side to protect the fin and enable attachment of the foot pocket. And this whole process is about a week? Yeah, when you're doing a lot of fins, like I'm producing somewhere from on average 150 to 200 a pair a month so and fins are everything you do so mm. it takes a while so edges are bonded ready and to go. wait for them to go and as we're walking around we're seeing all these amazing designs how do you come up with so many designs man i'm really lucky i've got a few really close friends that are really talented artists uh, apart from the ones that i design myself i've got um this one's Naomi Giddos, the shark design. Um, she does all these by hand with a, a Posca pen, is the original artwork. Crazy amount of time. Um, the blue parrot was a guy by the name of John Gornelius in, in the US. He's a pretty handy graphic artist. Um, another one of my close mates here is, is this guy, Jess Schilling. He did the, the Neptune design for me. And in this case, you can see the new water rails for the free diving market. Mm -hmm. It's sort of new on the block. Um, stuff that I've done, designs like the bait fish, the power shell design. And that's all from a photo, is it? Tacos. Yeah, photos with a bit of blending and a bit of tweaking, a bit of Photoshop. Mm -hmm. Naomi also did the, the pink bonefish here. That's what I've got. Um, <laughs> Green intensity, that was me playing around with a uh, bit of lead light design. Mm -hmm. But yeah, sky's the limit with the, uh, the graphics. Mm -hmm. 
And what are the different, other than obviously different material, uh, different graphics, what are the different materials that your fins are made from? Um, basically, I use three different types of material. I use a composite fibre material, which was the, the standard original diver fin. Um, that's like the nth degree of fiberglass. Uh, then we move over to carbon fibre material. which is a more upmarket version, along with adaptions of it, like a carbon copper material with the introduction of a little metallized thread in the weave. It makes a really nice fin. And that's and probably the, the main three at this stage. Is it that, um, I mean, from a composite to a carbon, why would you spend the extra money to get a set of carbons or copper beryllions rather than composites? Um, the weight is the main factor. The, um, a set of uh, carbon fins weighs about half of what a set of composite fins does. They're slightly more reactive in their response and depending on what style of fin you like, if you like a really fluid fin and a soft fin, you could go to a set of soft composite fins. Mm -hmm. If you want a fin that gives like an immediate response and you can really feel the spring, you'd go to one of the carbons. Mm -hmm. the, um, depending on your shape, size and body weight depends on whether you buy a soft fin, a medium fin, a short fin or a long fin. So, so there's soft, medium and hard in the different stiffnesses yeah. and there's short and long in the lengths. Yeah. What's your, your pick or what do you recommend for most people? Uh, most people, what most people buy are the, the long fin, the 900 long fin in either a soft or a medium used to be more mediums once upon a time. Now guys are starting to go softer, realising the, the benefit of having a softer fin. Uh, I myself, personally, I'm 6'1". Um, I use a short fin. Wow. And just because it's generally easy to get around in and out of the boat. Mm -hmm. I've had a hard time convincing people to use the, the short fin. Um, I also do use 900 fins, you know, on swimming around. I prefer the short one myself. Yeah. So would you say that softs are getting more popular because, um, I mean, it's conserving a bit more energy while you're diving? Energy-wise, also the advent of a lot of freediving courses where the freediving um, ways to have a softer fin, more kick cycles, but use less O2 because it's easier to move. Mm -hmm. um, Spearfishing-wise, coming from that background, uh, if you've got a fish stuck in the bottom and you want to pull it out of a hole, you don't want to be sort of sacrificing the, the first few metres getting back to the surface. So generally, spear fishermen would pick a slightly harder fin than what a free diver would, would be choosing. So, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I guess in current, a little bit harder yeah, helps in, as well. in current especially. Mm -hmm. In Australia, I've done several expeditions where we've been up the reef and we've had like quite strong current and the guys from overseas with this very extra soft European style fins just haven't been able to get back to the boat so yeah, yeah. all makes a difference yeah all makes a difference what um how do you keep innovating obviously you've come a long way in 16 years how do you keep things fresh and what's the the future technology in Dubai? one was the designs I was the, the first company to make fins beautiful essentially other than black grey red or orange, um, I was the first guy to come up with the idea of making him picture graphic and lots of different designs. Um, some people believe that the camo works, some people believe the camo doesn't work. I think it's a uh, convergence between art and form and you know something that actually works to its mechanics. Um, I'm always researching the next material, the new material, the next resin system, different production methods and stuff. And if you um, you want to see what's next? Yeah, we'd love to. Give us a sneak peek. Here we go. These are a <laughs> uh, a blended fibre. It's a combination of both carbon fibre and an egra. Um, extremely, extremely light, extremely flexible, and virtually unbreakable. Wow. The, um, the 
the Enegra takes a lot of load and deformation and uh, extremely light, very responsive, very nice action on the fin. Uh, the only drawback is the cost of the material is high and there's very few manufacturers in the world with the capability to produce the fibre and even less uh, with the ability to be able to make a mechanical option out of it. Um, maybe in the future, could be a bad thing for me because spins might last forever. <laughs> yeah, you were showing me some videos before about the difference between materials and that stuff just seems... Can you show us one more time actually just that twisting mechanism and, and how durable they are? Yeah, sure, so for a normal carbon fibre fin, you're probably not going to get it to <laughs> do anything like this. Yeah. There are a... Um, Fibre technology has come a long way, and especially rapidly in the last five years. Uh, there's a lot of technology behind, behind an actual fibre, the coating on the fibre, how the fibre is drawn and made, different treatments you can get on the fibre to help it work better with a particular resin system that you're using, whether you want mechanical probabilities uh, out of it or you know, uh, if you're building a nice, strong, lightweight structure, you don't need the mechanics as much. Mm -hmm. yeah. Whereas for fins, we need a lot of mechanics. The thing's got to bend a million times over. And yeah. All dive our fins have got a three year warranty, so they've got to be able to last. Otherwise, people are ringing up and abusing me in the middle of the night. <laughs> and show us a bit about these. They look a bit, um, a bit different to what I've seen around. Yeah, well, for the, um, mostly for the free diving market, um, they like to have a fin stabiliser or a large water channel. It stops the fin from moving, shimmering left to right if you haven't got a good fin technique. Uh, it also catches water and channels water a bit like a jet out the back of the fin. So the, um, the dive bar water rails, the water claws, design a little extrusion die. It comes as a, um, an add-on. That's a design that you did? Yep, it's made out of a uh, super flexible soft PVC and you basically just bond it to the leading edge of the fin. Um, nice. Adds around 70 grams to a pair of fins. Excellent. All right, well, thank you very much for showing us around your factory. I think we're about cool. to do a bit of a separate live video on how to assemble some fins. Yeah, we can do that. Cool, cool. awesome. Thanks, Ray.